This episode is sponsored by Squarespace Affirmative. <sighs> comments, comments, comments. Heart. Mm, heart. 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 Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, big bot bash today. See you in a bit. Heart. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 79. I got it right for once. No, it's not, it's 78, isn't it? Today is the big bot bash. Uh, it's a collaboration I put together to invite a load of YouTubers, sorry, content creators, to make a robot themselves using my junk bot generator. And we're gonna just put all our videos in one playlist and you can watch them all, you know, one after the other. You know like how collaborations used to be. But in all seriousness, you know, when I started my YouTube journey, you know, I started watching YouTube crafters and I wanted to just learn a bit more. The only way I could find them was with collaborations. I'd find someone collaborating with someone else and go subscribe to them. And you know, and then suddenly I kind of subscribed to all of them. I mean, all of them. So once you've watched this video, I mean, first, obviously, you can go and play the playlist and watch all the other crafters do their big bot bash and you can subscribe to them. If you like them, obviously. I mean, I picked them because I like them. That's, that's why I asked them to be part of the collaboration because I enjoy their channels. So hopefully you will too. Otherwise our parasocial relationship is done. I should probably tell you who else is involved in the collaboration. Um, I mean, I've got a list here. I mean, I do, I do know them all off by heart, but I just, I don't want to miss any, you know? We have Alex from 52 Miniatures. Uh, we have someone called Miss, Miss Paint, a young lady, I guess. I made this. Tina Fielding, Trent from Misprint. No, sorry, miscast. At Bell, Ben has hobbies. Boy Lay Hobby Time, probably heard of him. Gamey Builds with two wires. We got Gert from Dark Matter Workshop, one of the best German crafters I've ever met in my life. Nick at Double D Minis. No, sorry, CC Minis. I don't know why I saw that. Scratch Bashing. Welton Bauer Club. Theo Kane from Slimehouse TV. Tired Craftsman. And we have Whittle Goblin, which I think that's like Little Goblin with a speech impediment. When someone called Dan does. And if you made something for Big Bot Bash and you're not in this list, just put the hashtag Big Bot Bash in your video description and people can find your video off the back of our videos. But I'm going to get on with it because you've got a lot of videos to watch uh, and uh, you know, you've probably got kids and basically just tell those kids to fuck off until Monday. Maybe do it in a less kind of traumatic, damaging way. Uh, anything from. I'm going to get on with it. So oh, I forgot to print out a junk bot generator, but that's okay because I did make a game and this is the book for it. And on the back here, look, there we go. There's a junk bot generator in there. That's handy, isn't it? So we're gonna use a D20 to decide what type of body, head, arms, whatever. And you don't have to follow the instructions, you know, perfectly. You can just interpret the words however you like. So just grab your D20 and uh, let's roll the dice. Let's grab a bowl and let's roll the dice. Probably time to get the old uh, sketchbook out, I think. Uh -huh. 
So I hope you were paying attention, making notes, because there will be a test. Uh, what I rolled was, for the body, carapace, uh, which is like, you know, like insect-like, I guess. For the arms, triple jointed. For the head, free by free eyes, which is obviously a fantastic anime movie. Hands, take an eye out with that. Legs, triple jointed, again, which is fine, you know, and flavor is savage. Now flavor basically means like the aesthetic, the overall aesthetic of the thing, like, you know, how are you gonna paint it? Or just, you know. The flavour, you know, the flavour. Just don't, don't eat it. So what I'm doing here is just doodling, really. Uh, I know I need three eyes on a head, or uh, so whatever interpretation I want of three by three eyes. I'm thinking probably just three big eyes, because because it's three by three eyes. I don't know. I, nothing too complicated. The body, carrot paste. Well, I mean it's going to be like insect-like, isn't it? I think. I'm thinking something like a wood lice or like an armadillo, something like that. And before you comment, I'm quite aware that an armadillo isn't an insect. Uh, you might not know what a wood lice is, you might have to Google that. It's kind of like a weird little bug that just curls up in a little ball whenever you look at it funny. So as long as I've got armor plating established, carapace, that's fine with me. I mean, I think it's gonna be a big round body because I want some big round eyes, I think. So I don't know, we'll figure that out later. Arms, triple jointed. To be honest, I'm just gonna draw a few diagrams to figure out how to do a triple jointed arms. Now the shoulder counts as a joint, right? I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm counting that. I'm counting that as a joint. So like a shoulder, an elbow, a second elbow, and like a wrist. Yeah, I can, I can live with that, I think. So for hands, I rolled, take someone's eye out with that. I, I'll assume that to be something really sharp and pointy. You know, something like, I mean, you're just gonna point at someone's face and whoops, you take an eye out, you know, with a big long finger now or something. Basically, I'm thinking sharp fingers, or maybe just one sharp finger. So for the legs, I rolled triple jointed, uh, which is good actually, because I got triple jointed arms, triple jointed legs is, you know, it seems to work. Uh, I'm thinking no feet, no toes. I quite like the idea of triple jointed legs with like a point at the end, almost insect-like. It's gonna go with the carapace armor, I think. Plus, if I forget to build the feet again, uh, no one will notice. So the overall flavor of the build or the aesthetic of the thing is savage, which is, you know, it's quite, it's quite a good one to pick actually, because, you know, I quite like the idea of a bot going native. That's, that's my idea here. I think maybe strap a few bones, a few skulls here and there, maybe a bit of war paint. I mean, this is why the sketchbook phase is really important to me because, you know, I'm kind of drawing this here and I know that it's gonna look something completely different when I finally build it because this is just me generating another idea. I like the idea of a sleek, round, almost cute looking bot that's just gonna strap bones and skulls and maybe even some fake teeth or tusks to its body to look mean and scary because it's gone native. So what's going through my head when I paint this or draw this is, you know, why does it have three giant big eyes on the front? You know, and why is it covered in bones? And kind of the narrative that's coming to me right now is that, you know, it was probably some sort of scout bot sent down to the gutterlands to look for life. And maybe the first life it found were rusters. They like covering themselves in bones and rust. And maybe that's what this thing has tried to do to kind of, maybe it's been reprogrammed or it just wants to fit in. I don't know. That's, I'll think about that. And I'll talk about that later in Bill's story time, obviously. But uh, you know, even if it's not gonna look anything like this, I think that's quite a nice little drawing. I've got some ideas, which is the whole point. I guess I just have to build it now. Right, see you in a bit.
So this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now Squarespace is a website where you go to make websites. Now if you have no idea how to make a website, you don't know how to do with a HTML, is it HTML? I'm not sure. And you just want to make a website about things like, you know, like a pickle website, for example. Like, yeah, yeah, like that. Like pickle perfection. That's it, Bill. Click there. Uh, if you just want to make a website that's quick and easy and clean and nicely designed, then go to Squarespace. Uh, I made this website in like, you know, it must have been like 0.5 seconds. Maybe a little bit longer. I'm not sure. But it was really easy and it looks pretty good. And I will add stuff to it at some point. But uh, yeah, if you want to make your own website, there's a sale going on at Squarespace. There's a little link down below. Go and have a look. So this is an old pre-loved wooden coaster that old people will stick cups of teas on in case it melts a hole in the table because of superstition. I'm gonna use this, I found this in a charity shop as the base for my bot. So I'll assume that there were a few new people because this is like a big collaboration. What's the deal with Bill? Why are you using all these little bits of plastic crap and old found stuff? Because uh, I could be using kits, you know, plastic kits. I could be using old Warhammer bits to make like really cool intricate robots. But the challenge to me is to take little plastic bits of junk like this old Kinder Egg and other things. I like to make things using stuff you would normally throw away or things that's readily accessible to most people. Obviously, it makes it a little bit more of a challenge for me, which is good, that's what I like, uh, but it also makes it quite accessible for you and your kids. You know, if you have kids, you can just go and collect all their plastic junk and make something cool with it. That's, that's kind of my objective. And it's also good for the environment, I guess. Where was I? Oh yeah, you're probably wondering why I blowtorch these little bits of plastic. It's, it makes it more kind of stickable. I don't know the right word for it, but yeah, basically it makes them more susceptible to glue. So preparing plastics always a good idea, blow torching them, sanding them down, making the glue kind of grip. Uh, that's that's one way of keeping your bot, you know, intact for more than a week. Uh, but the best way is basically drilling holes, using wire and making armature. It's also a really good way to establish the silhouette of your build. You know, if you want it to be in some weird little pose like I'm going to try and do, it's nice to bend the wire in place and kind of figure it out. It's like drawing a little stick man before you sketch over the top of something. So we're going to use beads, obviously this is a build making stuff video and uh, beads, they're, they're good because they get thread on the armature wire, they're very strong and they can support the structure on the outside and I've got lots of like really interesting beads, I'm not going to lie, I mean look at those, I mean they're not the most interesting ones, but you get my point. Now I've seen a lot of bead bots out there that actually just look like beads thread and wire. Now the secret to that is to use beads that don't really look like beads. Like these, they look kind of almost mechanical. Not that I'm not impressed with all the bead bots out there. There's some really good bead bots, uh, but I like to disguise the fact that they're beads. I think that's what you need to kind of keep in mind. need some beads for the feet uh, and I want them to be kind of pointy so I'm going to use these little pointy beads. I think I saw these in a Studson Studio video once. I can't stress how important it is to have your wire a lot longer than you want the arms and the legs to be. You need those little bits of wire sticking at the end to attach hands and to uh, well stick them in a base like this. So there we go, it's kind of on a base, it's kind of solid. I put it in the position I want it to be. Uh, and then I glue those joints again with a bit of super glue so it doesn't move around too much. Uh, and that, that, to be honest, is the hardest part of making a bead bot. The rest of it is kind of fun. So my bot's gonna have three really large eyes on the front there. And I kind of want to make some really nice eyes. I've got these little cabochons that I learned about from Craftsman. Uh, and I usually paint on the back of them because it kind of, it reflects the light. It looks really good. But I'm thinking I've got these little, I think they're from a game of uh, drafts, like the little counters. So I'm thinking I might just paint the design on the inside and see how that looks. I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not. I guess it's worth a shot. I'm gonna paint these things light on the outside, working its way to dark in the middle, like a lens would. But, you know, thinking about it, it's already a lens, so maybe I don't have to do that. I mean, that looks kind of like the eye of Sauron uh, a little bit. Uh, I don't know, we can change that later if we don't like that. 
So I'm going to start with the underbelly and I'm going to add a few details. These things are zip ties or cable ties. They're basically what gangsters use to tie up people when they're going to take them out to the woods, you know, take it for a walk. Uh, I like to replicate ribs and organic structures on my robots. It makes it, I don't know, it seems to make it more interesting to me, like a robot's tried to recreate an organic structure like ribs and a spine. I never drill holes into your spine, it's not a very good idea. But uh, at this point, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I've got these little pegs from a little travel battleship game. I'm thinking let's make some little spines sticking out the spine. Yeah, do you, do you understand? Spines out of the spines. Spiny, you know, like that. Now we always like to add a little bit of mechanical detail on the back, like a vent or some sort of power core or something. That, that's a little bit of a pen and that's a little bit of a, like a plastic keyring. And this is a tiny little chess piece in a travel chess game. Uh, they kind of just go together perfectly like that. And it kind of looks a bit kind of sci-fi mechanical. Now this is EVA foam. Uh, I'm going to use a lot of this because I do love me some EVA foam. This is a little compass cutter thing that I forgot I had. I keep trying to cut circles and I forget I have this thing on my wall and it cuts little circles for you. Look, just like that. Now I like to stick EVA foam between things. If I'm sticking a bit of cheap plastic to a bit of cheap plastic, stick a little bit of EVA foam down first and everything sticks together. Like EVA foam is like the perfect filler. That's why I kind of stick it over the whole body. Super glue and EVA foam just like, just sucked it up. And once EVA foam is stuck to a bit of plastic, it's not coming off. So to make this thing look more like a wood louse, I did say wood lice earlier, it's actually a wood louse. I want to create these uh, like carapace pieces that kind of overlap, a bit like an om from Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind. My, one of my favorite films of all time. Uh, I, I think everything I build tends to reference that film in some way. But this was really tricky. Uh, I kept folding the EVA foam so I could cut like an even shape on both sides and then kind of just layer them up. Start from the bottom, work your way to the top. I'll add some rivets to it later. So I'm going to stick the eyes on just to see what they look like. I'm not 100% sure about them yet, to be honest. Um, we'll put them in position anyway. I mean, they look a bit... I don't know. Let's stick some eyelids on there, see what that looks like. You know, just to protect them from the rain. And um, yeah, I'm not sure. It kind of looks like the kid from A Christmas Story, you know? Like, a, I kind of feel sorry for him. I don't really want to feel sorry for him. But anyway, you know, like a kid with bad eyes, so I just take those eyes out start again you know that's what we did so the most valuable resource i have in my workshop plastic cotton earbuds uh, you can't buy these anymore and they've got a nice little flexible plastic tube uh, which we're going to use uh, to make pistons now i've only recently started making little pistons i find them quite fun and they're quite effective if you want something to look mechanical and robotic make pistons now that's a little bit of a thing from a spray bottle do you remember spray bottles yeah, I used to use spray bottles a lot. I'm big time now. The trick is to just layer up loads of thicknesses of tubes, really. And there we go, there's a piston. Uh, let's stick him on. And there we go. I'm not sure if that makes any mechanical sense, but that's definitely a piston on his arm. So these are toothpicks, like the most elaborate toothpicks I've ever seen. And I, I just love the little details on them. I've got like a whole pack of these, uh, but we're going to use these little bits to make more intricate pistons. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking the same thing that I'm thinking. Like I'm going to do all this little detail here, down the arms and down the legs. And you're probably never going to see it in the final build. I'm probably going to cover the whole thing with bones or EVA foam. I'm also going to add some generic holiday wire to add a few wires down there. So just some more detail we probably won't see at the end. I mean, if anything, this just kind of tells you that I'm winging it. I'm always winging it, to be honest. I don't really plan things that well. Uh, we may see some of this detail, we may not. Doesn't matter, you've seen it now, so just shut up. So along with all that other detail that you're not going to see, we're going to add a few hinges. Uh, these are triple jointed arms. I want to add uh, a few joints in there. Hinges, elbow hinges, whatever robots have. With these Connect 4 pieces from a little miniature Connect 4 set. And for extra detail on those hinges, we're going to add these little metal beads. 
you know, it's just occurred to me that I've been quite constructive and instructive with my narration today. I've actually been narrating what's going on on screen, which is quite unusual for me. I usually talk about all sorts of random crap. I think it's because it's a big collaboration. I think there might be a few new eyes watching the channel. They may expect the, you know, the usual. I do apologize for the, uh, the regular viewers. Uh, there will be more crap later, I promise. It's a long video, don't worry. So here we go, the beginning of the end. Here's Bill just covering up all that lovely detail we just stuck on the bot. Uh, I mean, there's some still showing, uh, but that's I guess that's how bots would be, right? They'd have all that detail underneath armor plating. So, you know, I'm making a real bot here out of plastic. And it's about four inches tall. I mean, it's not a real bot. But to be honest, I don't think I covered up too much of the detail. I think, no, we can see some of that lovely mechanics going on there. Let's just, let's just see how it is at the end though, shall we? Hello, again, it's me. I just want to interrupt the video for a second, just to remind you to subscribe to all of these crafters in the playlist. Could be up there. Also, I want to just take a quick minute of your time to show my Patreon builds. Uh, I set this challenge, this big bot bash challenge to my patrons and they've kindly sent in little pictures of their builds. So, you know, I guess we better have a look. benefits of being on my patreon you know you get get monthly challenges where i just tell you to make something and then you make it but the, the benefit if you'd like to get your builds put up on on this channel uh at some point in the future join patreon it's like a cup of coffee a month or if you prefer one of the other crafters in the playlist go join their patreon it's not a competition it's not there was something else i had to talk about i can't really i should probably write things down oh yeah by the way Bangarang in the Gutterlands is still available for purchase. Uh, print on demand down below, there's a link. Uh, and we're gonna stop printing them soon. So if you wanna get one, probably best get one now. Or if you just don't wanna get one, just, just don't get one. They're quite nice though. Uh, plus they've got the junk bot generator on the back if you wanna do your own big bot bash thing. I'm just gonna carry on. Time to make some robot hands. Hands are hard, claws are easy, as we all know, but uh, luckily I've got my little weird chopping board. Now I make my hands like little miniature bead bots, basically. I just thread armature through, thread beads on, uh, and it, they make pretty good little hands. Quite cartoony, but that's, that's the aesthetic I kind of go for, really. Kind of cartoony, exaggerated hands. Just like mine. Actually, no, mine, mine are like from a horror movie. Some little wooden beads there. Nothing else to say about that. Now at this scale, these hands aren't too tricky, but when you make hands for a little bead bot, yeah, they're, they're pretty tricky. Which is why I used to just make claws all the time, where the saying, hands are hard, claws are easy, came from, if uh, you follow Bill making stuff lore. Uh, but there we go, that's a pretty cool little hand. You can position the fingers however you like, and then you just attach that big bead to the little bit of excess wire sticking at the end of the arms. You know, if you did leave that little bit of excess wire, um, I bet you didn't. And there we go, that is the bulk of the build done. I think it might be time for a few greeblies. What do you reckon? <laughs> so, greebling is basically just adding details to big surfaces like the knuckles of a hand, or, you know, the knuckles of the other hand, or that little thing there, that thing, and a little, little green cheek. I don't think that's actually gonna be a cheek. But uh, also, it's where I add all my rivets, because um, I do love rivets, even if they don't make sense. Contractually obliged rivet montage done there, tick. Uh, now we're gonna add some bones, I think. Uh, I've got this big box full of bones. Uh, they're not real bones. I mean, I don't think, I don't think they're all plastic. They might be. Yeah, I think there's no real bones in there, I think we're safe. These are bones from Halloween things I get from the pound shop. I've just had a big collection of them over the years. But they're all very smooth, and uh, I like to rough them up using this little rasper. I do like a rasper. I should use the rasper more often, really. 
I like the idea of this robot killing giant monsters, taking their skulls and, you know, hip bones and making shoulder pads out of them, you know, like, like a nice fashion choice. Uh, also, maybe taking the spine from a human, uh, well, a particularly giant human, and using it as like a little forearm shield. So I need to think about his hands. Now the hand thing I rolled was take your eye out with that. Uh, so I'm thinking two giant spiky bones stuck on his wrist like a weapon, you know, just running along his finger there to kind of just stab things with pointy, you know, that would definitely take an eye out. I also really like the idea of him having tusks or teeth. They're obviously kind of tied to his face, but it's, you know, it's his idea of being scary, I guess. Now to attach all these bones to the body, we're gonna use a, a dry wet wipe, basically a wet wipe that I've let dry, and we're gonna dip it in PVA glue and make some weird sort of cloth or animal skin that is used to tie things to himself. When the PVA glue Yours, it'd be rock hard. I like the idea of the robot kind of just tying things to his body, not welding or actually making them structurally supported. You know, I like the idea of that. Like he's just watched these savages do it and figured, you know, I'll do the same thing because uh, I'm just like them. So I've just put a few bits of orchid bark there as rocks for him to rest his little hand on. And I think, you know what? I think we could be uh, ready for Prime. So I'm gonna have a little mess around with these speed paints. I've never really had a good result with these in the past, but I think I might just base coat the whole thing with speed paints and see how it goes. I'm probably just gonna paint over it. It doesn't matter because you know, painting time with Bill is boring time with Bill and boring time with Bill is story time with Bill. Uh, someone disagreed with that the other day. They said story time with Bill is boring time with Bill. I mean, you're entitled to your own opinion. Even wrong opinions are, you know, still opinions technically. So, you know, whatever, let's talk about this robot. So everything I design and build on this channel, I like to imagine they exist on the same planet. They coexist or they fight other characters that I've invented or, you know, they live near them and chat once in a while. I don't know. Basically, the made up planet is called the Gutterlands and you can have a look at that. There's a there's a link to the website down below where you can find out about any of my previous builds. But let's talk about this one. So I'm gonna name this robot the Warder. Uh, basically it just means someone who watches over a group of people and that's going to be relevant later. This thing was originally a scout bot. It would be sent down to planets to scout for life and for minerals or whatever. It has these big free eyes that it can use to triangulate things and basically scan everything around it. It can climb up on rock. It's like it's built to survive and to, to scout basically. So the water was sent down to the planet long, long before the town of Respite was ever established, before there was like a real kind of civilized human presence. But there were rusters. Now rusters were a civilization of people that crash landed on this planet centuries and centuries ago. They've basically become savage uh, kind of natives of the land. And they're quite vicious, ferocious. They don't like robots too much. They find the water and they take it prisoner. They usually destroy robots on the spot, but there was something different about the water. They take the warder back to the Ruster King and the Ruster King declares that they should not attack this robot. This robot has three eyes, uh, which is the symbol of their god, Feramar. Feramar is the god of rust and it has three eyes in the middle of its forehead. And just like the warder, they think this thing must be like an avatar of their god. You know, it must be maybe like a, the right arm of it or something sent there to help them, to help protect them against the humans that are gonna come and establish a colony. So the warder kind of takes to live in there amongst them, but it doesn't have any offensive abilities whatsoever. 
So for a long time, the Rusters tried to train the water, tried to break its programming to make it more aggressive so they could use it in battle or to hunt animals. And, and the water just won't go with it. It goes against its programming. It won't attack anything living. Uh, but it will watch. It can watch on guard. But the Rusters kind of get sick of this and they think, look, we need him to look at least a bit aggressive. So they start sticking animal bones to him. They give him a big weapon on his right arm that he never uses. Many battles have been fought between Rusters and humans, uh, and the warder's been there, uh, standing there looking aggressive, but not actually doing anything. And this has caused a lot of trouble with the Rusters. They think, why don't we just get rid of it? Uh, but it's forbidden, because it's basically uh, the eyes of their god, Ferrara. So, to this day, the warder still lives amongst the Rusters, just walking around, observing everything, taking everything in, and not actually being of any use to anyone. Uh, even likes to watch people doing their private business you know it doesn't mind it likes to watch everything because that's what it does but that's the story of the water i hope you enjoyed that so here we are the water i'm not sure about that name i don't know i mean it kind of kind of worked in my head at the time but uh i'm really happy with this build i'm really i really am happy the eyes are much better i mean i was getting like big goggle eyed glasses kind of impression with the last ones i think these are much better so when I make these things, I, I make them and then I create a story around them. Uh, and I've kind of made this thing into like a pacifist, which probably disappoints quite a few of you out there, especially those little teenage boys. It's like, he's got a big spiky thing on his own. It's not really how my brain works, sorry. Maybe one day the plant could call to him and he can go to the plant and uh, be turned evil. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, just go to thegutterlands.com. There you go, big mop bash, done. Uh, 2024, is it 2024? What's the future? So glamour shots coming up in a second. Once this is done, go and watch every other video in the playlist uh, at your own time, obviously. Subscribe, like, share, all of that stuff. Uh, try and share the love, you know? Because I'm, I'm all about love. I'm just so full of love. Uh, I just want to share it, spread it around everywhere. Actually, my wife tells me off sometimes for doing it. So there we go, that is my entry for the Big Bot Bash 2024. I'm not even sure this is an annual thing yet. It could be, it's up to you. If you go and watch everyone else's video in the playlist, you know, subscribe and like and comment and say that you want more Bot Bash in the future, let us know, you know. I really enjoyed working with all these other YouTubers and I was really impressed, I've got to be honest, I was quite surprised how well they took to the challenge and their builds are just, you know, you see people that just paint miniatures all the time and then they make a really good robot. It kind of puts me to shame. I should probably learn how to paint. Anyway, thank you patrons for supporting the channel. Uh, like always, uh, I love you guys. I, I really do. Especially, uh, no, I can't. I can't pick favourites. That wouldn't be right. I won't pick favourites.